The gentleman. Here, take them. I don't need them. Oh, sir, thank you, but I can't. Nonsense, take them, please. I have plenty of pears in my lungs. I don't need you, Mr. These at all. Clean cut gentleman in a nice grey suit was holding a pair of socks he just pulled out of his bag and handed him over to barefooted homeless man. So, really? It isn't. I, 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 is it going to trouble you? The homeless man sheepishly replied in a southern accent. The gentleman was coming accustomed to an accent. He travelled further south and was beginning to grow on him. Gentleman standing with the homeless man outside a small town gas station in rural Georgia, closed his travel bag and placed his leather attache case on top. Looking at his car door, he then looked up at the homeless man. The gentleman could read and pain and shame written all over the down to the man's face. The homeless man looked at him at his feet. Once a gentleman's graze met his eyes. Look, we all hit hard times in our lives. Homeless man nodded in response, but looked ashamed. Take me socks. Go inside the gas station and get some food and water. If you like, we run to another store and pick up some shoes. Bless you, sir. Bless you. The socks and food are enough. I cannot thank you enough. God bless you. A small tear ran down the homeless man's face. He wiped it quick away quickly. The gentleman attended he didn't notice. It's nothing, the gentleman said, with a sympathetic smile. The homeless man sat on the ground and quickly placed the socks on his blistered bloody feet. Once finished, the two entered the gas station together. Hey, 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 you two, said an old man standing behind the gas station counter. He can't come in with shoes on. No service for him. I want him out. It's okay, just relax, assured the gentleman. He looked over at the attendant, who was currently wearing a Southern Cross Rebel hat, a matching shirt, and wondered to himself if he really, if it was really about the homeless man's lack of footwear or something else. I'm going to grab some food and we'll be out of your way. There's no need for any trouble. I don't like this, grumbled the old attendant. I've got my eye on both of you, he said under his breath. Smile, the gentleman generally replied. It's going to be a good day. I can feel it. After the two men finished picking up food, got food and soap, the gentleman said his goodbyes to the homeless man. He walked his car, beat the alarm off, and into the luxury automobile. Proceeded down the old southern road, deep into South Georgia. The street was lined with grassy fields, crossed with deserted farmhouses and barns. Roughly twenty miles past the grass station, the gentleman's car approached the blue. Poor down saloon pulled on the side of the road. A gentleman car drew closer to the sideline. Blue sedan, an only man roughly around his late around his seventies, came in the front of his training vehicle, waving his hands away wildly. Gentleman looked afterwards looked out. Those around him quickly pulled this luxury automobile over the side of the road, parking directly behind the broken blue down blue sedan. An elderly man is exited the pressures at the stone side of the blue sedan and swiftly walked toward the lowering window of the gentleman's car. Looking like a pleasant grandmother in oversized pink cardigan, she yelled, Oh my word, thank you for stopping. Elvis and I are starting to believe we're going to die out here. She gripped the edge of the gentleman's car window. He leaned in a bit. The gentleman shifted backwards as much as he could. In his, in his seat, trying to still look pleasant. Get a grip, Priscilla, the old man snapped behind his wheel. We ain't gonna die. The old man's face was rough and hard lines. Forming a permanent, scalded look, he was dressed neatly, wearing a tuck uh, in polish at the Mexicans with no socks. Yes, we are. Not, but not now, because this handsome young man, the elderly woman said, as she gently stroked the gentleman's arm. The gentleman smiled at the woman, and the old man approached her, leaning in the car, the same, the same as his wife had done. The names are Elvis and Priscilla, just like El, like the Presleys, the gentleman joked. The couple, like, just like who?
Who? The other girl joined her arms. Old man asked. His eyes were gazing round the car. As he was looking for a lost item. Never mind, the gentleman said. How can I help you two? The woman smiled, clasping her hands together over her heart. Would you mind taking a look at our car? See, the obvious isn't good for much any more. Priscilla slapped the old man's arm. He grumbled under his breath. Sure can, the gentleman said with a smile as he exited his car. How nice, such a good Samaritan you are. She patted the gentleman on the back of, as he walked over the blue sedan. You think he's a good Samaritan, don't you, Elvis? The very best, Priscilla. Yes, such a good Samaritan, Elvis. Would you pop the hood for his good Samaritan? The old man slowly reached past the blue sedan's door, pulling the lever and releasing the car's hood. The old man lifted the hood and peered at the immaculately clean engine. He, looked a clo- he took a closer look. Puzzled by the way, everything seems in place. Everything seems to be good. Look at them in here. You sure you didn't run out of gas or something? The car's fine, sweetie, said the old woman's voice from behind the gentleman's back. But we're needing your bullet and your keys. What? The gentleman asked while turning around to face the old couple. But instead, the gentleman came to face the barrel with caught point four five, and the obvious raggedy, smiling face. What the? was all the gentleman could say before the obvious squeezed the trigger out of the gold. Putting a bullet square between the gentleman's eyes. The end. The negative man tells.